Well, hello and welcome to the Tuesday edition of the DC Today. Uh, we had a fully normal day in markets, meaning stock and bond and banking markets were all reopened. Um, after the Columbus Day holiday, where only stock markets were open. And you did see uh, exactly what would have been predicted in the aftermath of the um, Hamas atrocity against Israel, which was a significant drop in bond yields that rallied bond prices higher. And yet you saw stock prices rally yet again. And I think we're now up 850 to 900 points from the bottom on Friday. Uh, but you, you got about 300 points up Friday, you had about 200 yesterday, you got another 150 or so today, and then there was an intraday move that accounts for the difference on Friday. Um, this is a very important thing for me to say. Generally, when you have a big event that, that freaks people out, a, a war, an invasion, an a exogenous shock, yields drop, bond prices rally as part of a fight to safety. That part is pretty easy. But of course, that is the opposite of risk assets rallying. You can't get a fight to safety rally in non-risk assets because people are trying to get out of risk and still have a fight, uh, excuse me, a rally around risk. And, and yet on a small scale, it's not huge. Let's not get carried away here with the Dow up 350 points. Could, from since the since the Hamas attack over the weekend, could the Dow have been up 200 yesterday and 150 ish today, without um, bond yields dropping today, with without the action out of Israel Hamas? Of course, it doesn't take any reason to buy to go up 350 points in two days or to go down 350 in two days. However, the notion of bond yields dropping today and equities going higher, it really reinforces what has been one of our biggest themes for months, which is that stocks and bonds are heavily positively correlated right now. When yields drop and bonds go higher, stock prices are going higher with it. And inversely, which was more often the case, obviously, in the latter half of September, when yields rise and bond prices drop, equities are dropping with it. And what I think we got today was nothing more than a continuation of stock bond correlation. And it just so happens that while traditionally out of a weekend military, you know, uh, uh, distress event, you might see bond yields drop, bonds rally and stock prices drop or, or whatnot. In this case, that stock bond correlation held and bonds pulled stocks along with them. And, and, and yesterday, of course, you saw energy up a lot as oil prices were up. Today, technically, energy was the only negative performing sector, but it was minus 0.02%. So if you don't mind, we'll go ahead and call that flat. The worst performing sector today was energy at flat. And then utilities were up 1.36%, which shouldn't be a big surprise based on how they have traded with bonds and uh, gotten hammered as bond yields rose. And then now with bond yields dropping today, uh, it caused utilities to rally. Um, I'm, you know, the yield move was pretty significant. The, the, it, within uh, the, at the 10 year, the, the yield dropped 13 basis points. It closed at 4.65%. But you know what, I'm going to pull up where it was across the yield curve. Um, you know, the three month, six month were only down two to four basis points. The uh, two year was down uh, 11. The three year yield was down 13, five year 13, seven year 13, 10 year 13, 30 year 10. So in that intermediate part of the curve from about the three year to the 10 year, all were down 13 uh, base points together. That's a pretty meaningful move higher in those bond prices. Um, but I think that if people thought there was a real significant risk off thing, you may have seen the 10 year drop below four and a half. But interestingly, it didn't get up to, to 5% um, last week when, when things were really moving higher. What did it top out at? I think for a brief minute, it got to four, eight something. Hold on real quick here. 
Yeah, I just shy of 4.9, about 4.88. Um, and then, you know, now we're sitting here, it's down about 20, for 4, 24 basis points or so in, in the last few days. Uh, some of that from before the weekend events and, and most, a lot of it today. So all that to say, um, we'll see where bond yields go from here, but I still continue to believe that wherever bond yields go is where stock, stocks uh, will go inversely. As yields drop, then it means bonds and stocks would be rising and vice versa. Now, earnings season also started today and PepsiCo uh, released their earnings. There's more numbers coming from other companies throughout the rest of the week. Uh, but that was the big headliner today to launch the next earnings season that will be in heavily for the next three weeks. And by the end of the week, we'll have a lot of big banks and financial firms releasing. But the market liked what it saw thus far. Um, President Biden did speak near the end of the day today. There wasn't a whole lot of new information said. I mean, you confirmed that they do have, uh, Hamas does have American hostages in Gaza. Uh, we knew there were some. Uh, that there have been some American casualties. We, we knew there were some. Um, yeah, I think, I think that it's a really uh, uh, awful thing we're watching right now. And yet the notion of Israel going in for a prolonged um, counter in Iran doesn't seem to be what markets are expecting. And, and I, I think that the reason is that markets are in a more of a wait and see mode. So I don't think this is a case where markets are just pricing in everything. Now they price in what they know, but they, there's a lot that is unknown hour by hour and day by day. And so we'll continue to watch this and let it play out. And in the meantime, believe that we are uh, positioned around what we can be positioned around with the varying uncertainties. Um, I also have a couple other real comments right now, some in the political realm. Keep in mind always, the DC today was named as a double etendre, um, that my weekly commentary that we've labeled and branded and, and named for years and years was Dividend Cafe. So when we decided to change the naming of my COVID and markets daily missive in, into something not COVID-ish, um, the DC today had a kind of connectivity to Dividend Cafe. And that's really sort of probably the primary meeting is like a, a daily version of Div Cafe with, with the Friday weekly commentary being, being the big one. But then obviously because there is a kind of synthesis on money and politics and government, the Beltway, pu public policy is a better way to put it, there's a kind of DC connective tissue there as well. I don't think politics is the primary mover to markets and I don't even think it's one of the primary movers, and yet I do think a lot of the readership and the commentary and the interest level um, is is in that vein where economics and politics mix, where markets and policy mix, et cetera. Okay, so I say all that to just rationalize that um, I'm making a few comments here. I think Robert Kennedy pulling out of the Democratic primary to run as an independent is a reasonably interesting event. I think that uh, Cornell West announcing he would do the same last week, not in the Green Party, but instead as independent, in the sense that I am so convinced our presidential elections in this country are now, have been for several cycles, and will be for several more, one on the margins, that in the margins of a very select number of battleground states, these kinds of things can matter and it probably was tremendously helpful to President Biden or whoever the Democratic candidate may end up being that Cornell West would run as an independent where he'll be on many less state ballots than he otherwise would have been as a Green Party candidate where they had more infrastructure in place to put a candidate on a, on a ballot. And, and then I also would argue, uh, but not with a lot of conviction, it may be something outside of my understanding other political commentators that I respect may very well disagree, but I think that it's entirely possible that Robert Kennedy running as an independent rather than a uh, Democrat might hurt President Trump or whoever the Republican nominee ends up being more than the Democrat, despite the fact that Kennedy is coming out of the Republican or the Democrat side. Now, I would have to see what states he ends up qualifying for. Because if he pulls some votes um, from both alike, but it ends up being 60-40 or 55-45, and, and that's only in primarily states that already 
had a very clear, uh, you know, likelihood of which candidate, you know, a real red state or a real blue state, it's sort of irrelevant. But if he qualifies for the, the, the um, ballot in some of the battleground states, and then my general feel holds, which is not data driven, it is a feel that right now he has a bit more appeal with a certain fragment of the, um, the Republican Party. Um, you know, I don't say any of this is like a good thing. I don't actually say it's a bad thing either. I have a whole bunch of thoughts on it I don't really want to get into right now, but I'm just being kind of descriptive and analytical. I suspect that that's a big chain, uh, turn of events could have an impact on the overall electoral cycle. Finally, the biggest thing today is that Dividend Cafe on Friday, I wrote about tighter financial conditions, um, which are you know clearly apparent to anyone paying attention, that they would, could, and certainly should substitute for any additional rate hikes. And I made my case using the Fed zone data that their proxy funds rate was already showing real effective policy rate of something around 7%, not five and a quarter, five and a half. And I thought it was interesting that yesterday, Monday, Fed Governor Jefferson and Fed Governor Logan in Dallas both said almost the exact same thing. So I think that they are prepping futures markets for no additional rate hikes. Um, we do have a CPI number coming Thursday and there's other things floating around, but my general feeling is that they are far past where it was appropriate to be hiking and that are, they are likely past where they will be hiking. But rather, uh, uh, the question then pivots to how long they stay high, uh, especially with this additive premium in the proxy rate uh, continuing to tighten. Uh, beyond that, the um, data today economically, the NFIB small business optimism, it, it dropped half a point, not a lot on the month. Uh, yesterday, I think it was the Fannie Mae home purchase sentiment index came out. I just thought it was interesting that that home purchase sentiment dropped two and a half points. Um, only 16% within that index are saying it's a good time to buy a home. And that is actually an all time low. Now it's tied for an all time low, but my point is a lot of people just, you know, uh, uh, the inverse of 16 would mean 84% apparently don't think it's a good time to buy a home. And this may have a lot to do with uh, the stalemate in prices we talk about a lot. All right, there's an Ask David at the dctoday.com. Other than that, I'm going to leave it there. Definitely a, a couple links you might be interested in. I was on set with Varney at Fox Business this morning for an hour, and my team put together a little highlight reel. So you may want to watch some of those links. But other than that, I'm going to let you go here. So I will be back with you tomorrow on Wednesday. Uh, with another DC today, and I would be happy for you to reach out with any questions. In the meantime, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and thanks for reading the DC today. Mm -hmm.